Have you ever been hit by a rock flying through the air? It hurts! And have you ever tripped and fell on a rock? That also hurts! And that is how rock type Pokemon moves work. Thanks for watching. But really, I assume since you clicked this video, you want some details. Well, in that case, let's go over every single rock type Pokemon move and explain what it does and how it do. You know, the moves that start with the word rock in the name are probably the easiest to explain, so let's start there. Rock throw is just that. The user grabs a rock from the battlefield and throws it. It's described as a small rock, so probably just a rock, you know, slightly bigger than a fist, maybe the size of a ball. It's a very basic attack. Some Pokemon grab rocks off the ground for it, and others, like many rock types, are able to generate rocks through magical powers, or perhaps use rocks that are a part of themselves. There's a lot of possibilities with rock types. Rock Blast is basically an upgrade of rock throw. Some Pokemon using this move throw the boulders with great force, while others launch them. They blast them forward with rock manipulation elemental magic stuff. Rock Slide is another upgrade to rock throw. Now an entire avalanche of stones, ranging in size from pebbles to small boulders, is poured upon the opponent. All of these hits in such rapid succession explains why there is a chance of causing flinching. It's pretty straightforward. Rock Tomb throws multiple large rocks all around the opponent, trapping it and making the battle area more complicated for it. Overall, dealing damage and lowering your opponent's speed. It's a lot harder to run around super fast when there's all these big rocks everywhere in your path. And then we have Rock Wrecker. Also known as Rock Cannon in Japanese, the user launches a massive boulder at its foe, dealing massive damage. <laughs> no, really. Massive damage. But I mean clearly. Have you ever had a massive boulder thrown at you? Here's a car being crushed by a boulder. And this isn't even that big of a boulder. It hurts. And obviously, it takes a lot of power to move and then throw such a large boulder, so the Pokemon using it has to rest the following turn. And Rock Polish brings us to our first scientific explanation. This move is only naturally learned by Rock-type Pokemon and Steelix. The idea is that the user polishes itself to greatly raise its speed stat. This is to do with the way air resistance and drag works. If you compare old, blocky, bumpy cars to the newer, sleeker, sportier cars of today, the aerodynamics almost slice the air, and some even use this air to benefit the car rather than being an obstacle for it. In a way, we polished the car's design. <laughs> In the case of rocks, by default, many rocks are bumpy, sharp, and have rough, hard edges. But compare that to a river rock. After several decades of water flowing around it, it's caused the rock to be eroded or polished into a sleeker, curvier rock. Now, it's much more aerodynamic. And some people use rock tumblers and polishers to manually polish rocks quickly, creating decorative rocks commonly seen in fish tanks and hippie healing stores. All in all, these rocks move through the air easier than rough typical gross rocks. So, similarly, the rock-type Pokémon with a rough body of rock wears down and polishes its hard edges to reduce its drag, thus speeding it up. And those were the rock-type moves with the word rock in the name. Rock polish was fun, so next let's explain the rest of the status-type rock-type moves, like Wide Guard, which is learned by significantly more non-rock Pokémon than by rock Pokémon. When used, the user protects itself and its allies from wide-ranging attacks, meaning attacks that hit more than one Pokémon in a 2v2 or 3v3 battle. So, moves like Earthquake and Surf will be blocked. Now, that doesn't exactly scream Rock-type, does it? Rocks can be big, I suppose, and most of the Pokémon that can learn this move naturally are big and wide themselves, mostly. And other languages all call it Wide Guard, too. So, while this is a rather weak reason, I suppose it's Rock-type because rocks can be wide, and rocks are very defensive. In fact, defense is the highest stat on average for Rock-type Pokémon. Pokemon. So, wide guard. It's rock type. I mean, it's what we make sea walls and stone walls out of. Blocks the surf. Alrighty then. Now, stealth rock makes much more sense for a rock type move, and should have been in the previous category. Hmm. The user gathers or creates sharp stones and scatters them around the opponent's side of the battlefield. So now, when a new Pokemon enters the battlefield, it's hurts! Ah! Sandstorm. 
creates a sandstorm. This does beg the question, are the rocky and groundy Pokemon that know this move capable of controlling the wind too? Or rather, are they just using their rock powers to move a bunch of sand all around the air, simulating a sandstorm? But the wind isn't technically there. Hmm, what a curious question that we'll have to explore in another video. Shameless plug here whenever we get around to making that. Anyway, a Pokemon uses Sandstorm, now there's a Sandstorm. And being in a Sandstorm sucks if you really aren't prepared for it. Sand is terrible. It's coarse and rough and irritating and it gets everywhere. And so it does tiny bits of damage each turn to all non-rock, steel, or ground type Pokemon. Makes sense, as their bodies are hard enough to resist the storm, at least for a short while. Sandstorms normally really beat down hard on stones and smoothing them out, eroding them away and such, but I guess that's over the course of decades and centuries, not five turns in a Pokemon battle. A Celerock! That also has rock in the name. I'm bad at this! This is the signature move of Lycanroc, specifically the midday and dusk forms. This move is simple. The user, Lycanroc, does a fast and smashes into the opponent. It's like a quick attack, but it uses the rocks on its neck to tackle them, so it deals rock-type damage. Head smash is just that. The Pokémon smashes its head into the opponent at full force, not holding back. This deals massive damage, but also causes terrible damage to the user. I mean, you just smashed your head into another Mon, of course it hurts! This move is likely Rock-type, because all of the Pokémon that can learn the move are either Rock-type, or have skulls that could be as hard as Rock. It's the same logic with loads of Pokémon learning Metal Claw. They have claws that are as hard and sharp as Metal, without actually being Metal. Same idea, skulls as hard as Rock, without actually being Rock. Stone Edge stabs the opponent with sharp stone edges. Rocks, especially when broken, tend to get sharp edges, capable of causing some serious damage. Hence why lots of ancient weapons and tools used sharpened stones as their heads. Having such a sharp object be used in the attack explains why it has a high critical hit chance. You can do a lot of damage with a sharp stone compared to a rough one, especially when you land it in just the right spot. But, curiously, the animations for this move show rocks coming out of the ground from just beneath the opponent, so it's likely the user using rock elemental magic to break them out from the ground right beneath where their enemy stands. Smackdown is another move that doesn't need to be rock type, but it does work better than any other type, I suppose. The idea is that the user throws a stone or another projectile at their opponent. I mean, the in-game description even says, or projectile, because I mean, Froakie can naturally learn this move, though I do suppose any Pokemon can just pick up a stone and throw it. The thing that makes this move different from Rock Throw, besides being able to throw more than just rocks, is that the move is able to hit Pokemon that are high in the air, like after using the move Fly or Bounce. And if the Pokemon it hits is Flying type or has Levitate, then they become grounded. It knocks them out of the air, essentially. This Smackdown is raw! Then Roll Out. Oh jeez, Roll Out. Funny how this Rock type move is most famous for its use by a normal type Pokemon, Miltank. In fact, again, most of the Pokémon that can learn this move aren't even Rock-type, and it's by a pretty large margin, too. But the idea here is that the Pokémon takes the next five turns to roll around at the speed of sound. It's got places to go, it's gotta follow their rainbow. But really, though, five turns of spinning and hitting the opponent each time it hits, it raises in power. And fun fact, if you use Defense Curl right before using Rollout, Rollout's power is doubled, essentially because the user is already prepped in their circular form. They are ready to roll out. But why is it Rock-type? Well, basically because it's inspired by a boulder rolling down a hillside, getting faster and faster and faster as it gains more and more momentum, dealing more and more damage to the things as it continues to get faster and faster, it's scary! Rock slides with big boulders are no joke. Power Gem is simple, and its speciality is that it's, like, one of the only special rock-type moves ever. That's why you would use it. The user uses the gem on its body to fire a beam of damaging light. I suppose all gems are mystical and powerful in Pokémon. Notably, some gems and crystals are famously capable of refracting light, though usually those are carefully cut gems, not raw gems like what are shown in the game. Diamond Storm is the signature move of Deontay, who is said to be able to take the carbon in the air and crush it between its hands to create diamonds. Wow. And with this move, it does so a lot to whip up a storm of diamonds and hail them down upon the enemy, which, like any other kind of rock, would hurt. And Ancient Power has the user summon forth its power from the ancient world from within, and it sends fossils and stones from the depths at its opponent. And as its in-game description states, this prehistoric move may boost all of the user's stats. 
so clearly something crazy is going on. The user is like looking back at its prehistoric lineage and saying, Billions of years of natural selection will not lead to me losing this battle. Rawr! And so all of its stats get boosted. It still loses anyway though, because it's rock type, but notably every Pokemon that naturally learns this move is either a fossil Pokemon or has a connection to the ancient Pokemon world. Things like they haven't changed much since then. And also Togepi. Why does Togepi learn it? The heck? I'll look into that later. Tar shot is exactly as it sounds. The user shoots sticky tar at the target, lowering their speed and making them weaker to fire attacks. Tar is a dark brown or black viscous liquid made up of hydrocarbons and free carbons. It can come from coal through destructive distillation, which does explain this move's association with Colossal. Tar is extremely sticky and adds a lot of traction to anything it touches, and it's also quite flammable. It even melts if it gets too hot. Roads have tar as an ingredient, and in some places roads melt, it's bad, and slows down anything that's on it. The dang heat makes it all gooey and sticky again. Gross. Splintered Storm Shards is the signature Z-move of Lycanroc, wherein it shatters the entire battleground into sharp rocks, and uses all of them to strike its opponent at full force. Absolute. Pure. Oucha tube. And since it just destroyed the arena, any battlefield effects that were in place disappear. This move is basically just a combination of a lot of the other moves, but increased exponentially. Same with Continental Crush, the generic rock type Z move, wherein the user basically takes rocks from all around and combines them, summoning a massive mountainous boulder, and then it just kind of lets it go. It just drops on the opponent. Again, it's the boulder thing. Boulders hurt, man. Lots of crushing power. It's pretty straightforward. Max Rockfall, which is just Continental Crush again, really, but it also causes a sandstorm afterwards. So supposedly, the rock shatters into sand upon meeting contact with the ground, and now there's sand all up in the wind, which is all because of the Dynamaxing thing. There's like a storm going around the Pokemon, so it's kicking up all that sand that the move just created. And then G-Max Volcalith is the signature Gigantamax move of Colossal, wherein it it does basically the same thing as Max Rockfall, except it also leaves hot coals all around the opponent's side of the battlefield. So it does damage over the next few turns. If only the Pokemon actually moved during the battles, walking on hot coals is a classic way of well, going over hot coals without them hurting. It's the standing still on them that does damage. Yeah. So all in all, when you really break it down, most rock type moves make perfect sense as they utilize rocks besides wide guard. That one should get out of here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out our merch store down below and check out the other videos in this series right here. Until next time, never stop using your noggin and be sure to subscribe and stuff. I haven't said that in like a year it seems. Click the bell. Oh man, I said that too. Thank you